Today's video talks about representing a linear relationship using a table of values. I'm on page six in your unit 1B packet. And as you can see, it's the problem of the day where I want you to do some thoughtful thinking, careful solving. Um, and I would like you to answer uh, question four and five. Uh, it's not five, question four and 20 on your own. Uh, please do this algebraically. Write some let statements. So solve this algebraically. Um, you may need to do some guess and check and figure it out uh, that way, but I would like you to solve it using an equation and variables. Okay? So uh, pause the video, finish page six, and then we'll go on. So as you can see, I'm in the eighth grade textbook, 3.3 representing a linear relationship using a table of values. I call it a t-chart. A lot of math teachers call it a t-chart. So once you solve the equation for y in terms of x, so you have to do that first. Solve for y in terms of x. Create a t-chart or a table. Choose at least three x values and solve for the corresponding y values. Okay, so first thing I got to do is solve number one for y and and all the other things on the other side of the equation, which means I'll have to add 2x and I'll have to add 1 to both sides, add 2x and add 1. These will cancel, and I get y equals 2x plus 1. So I'm going to choose three variable or three values for x and plug them in and solve for y. I always choose a negative, zero, and a positive. So my three values, a negative, zero, and a positive. So I'm going to stay close to the origin because, yes, uh, these are linear equations. We could graph these. I'm going to choose uh, negative two, zero, and a one. So putting negative two into this. Um, and you could extend this table to look like this, if you like, showing your work in the center. So here's my expression, 2x plus 1. When I put negative 2 in, I have 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Well, that's negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. You don't have to use this um, expression part in the middle. You can just use the xy table as such that's over here, or you can use this area to solve your expression. So 2 times 0, well, that's 0, plus 1 would give me 1. And yes, my uh, value of 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 would give me a value of 3. Now, what's coming is I'm going to take these three points, these ordered pairs, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, and 1, 3, and put them on graph paper because linear equations can graph onto um, a Cartesian plane. So example 2, 3y minus 6x equals 3. I'm going to add 6x to both sides, and I get 3y's, well, not what I want, equals 6x plus 3. So... I'm going to divide by 3 because I want just y by itself. y equals 2x plus 1. So here's my x, here's my y. And yes, I could um, extend this and make a middle section here, although I think I'm going to go off the board here. This is my expression 2x plus 1. And this is y. Hopefully you can see that. So x is, um, I'm going to choose this time, let's say, negative 1, 0, and 2. So 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. 2 times 0 plus 1. Well, that's 0 plus 1 would give me 1. And 2 times 2 plus 1 would give me 5. So the ordered pairs is negative 1, 1, 0, 1, and 2, 5 work in example number 2. Example number 3, already solved for y equals. This is an easy one. 
I'm going to choose negative 3, 0, and positive 3. 2 times negative 3, I'm not going to make the middle section here because I can do this mathematically in my head. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times positive 3 is 6. Negative 1 half y equals x. Well, I'm not going to divide by negative 1 half because we don't divide by fractions. We multiply by the multiplicative inverse, which would be negative 2. That negative has to come along with it. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2, and the negatives cancel, and I get y equals negative 2x. Well, I had y equals positive 2x in number 3. I'm going to choose the same three, um, variable, or three values for x, negative 3, 0, and positive 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 gives me positive 6. Negative 2 times 0 gives me 0. And negative 2 times positive 3 gives me negative 6. So you can see they're very similar, question 3 and 4. 6x plus 12 equals 0. Hmm, there's no y. Yes, sometimes that happens. This is a unique example here. So I'm going to solve it for x. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And I get 6x equals negative 12. Dividing by 6, I get x equals negative 2. So I do not have a choice. Every time, my x's have to equal negative 2. My y's, um, I can choose any value for y. So this is what's unique. I don't have a y, so here's where I'm going to reverse what I was doing in the four examples above. I chose values for x and solved for y. Here I solve for x, no choice, and I have to use negative 2. So now here I do have a choice for y. And again, I'm going to still choose a negative, 0, and a positive. So that's the um, vertical line, x equals negative 2. If I was to graph this on my Cartesian plane, x equals negative 2 is this line, x equals negative 2. And here's my point. Negative 2, negative 1, for instance. Negative 2, 0. Negative 2, positive 1. So that's the line x equals negative 2. So sometimes there is no y. Solve it for x. Then you don't have a choice for y, or choice for x. You have to have a choice for y. You can't choose your x value. It always has to be negative 2. Number 6. Now there's no x. Okay, well, y, no choice here. y is always negative 5. And x, I'm going to choose three values. Okay, negative 2, 0, and positive 3, let's say. So that's the linear equation that graphs as a horizontal line, y equals negative 5. So that would look like this. And my points negative 2, let's say, is right there, negative 2, negative 5, 0, negative 5, and 3, negative 5. This is the line y equals negative 5. It's a horizontal line. So a y equals, yes, this is the y-axis, and it numbers all the lines on the paper that are horizontal, for instance. Think graph paper here. These are the lines on the graph paper horizontally. They are y equals vertically on your graph paper. Vertically on your graph paper. Those are the lines that are x equals. So two unique circumstances here, 5 and 6. Pay attention to those in particular. Hopefully you have some room on the bottom of your page there. I'm going to add another example in. So I have to extend my page a little bit. Maybe you have some room at the bottom. This is example number 7. 3x plus 4y equals 12. So I want you to add this one on. So I'm going to subtract 3x's. And I get 4y equals negative 3x plus 12. 
I'm going to divide by 4, I'm going to divide by 4, I'm going to divide by 4. Then I get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. So my xy table, and the reason why I'm adding this on here, is that you should choose values for x that will clear with this coefficient negative 3 fourths. So choose multiples of 4, because that will clear, choose multiples of 4, because that will clear the 3 fourths. So I'm going to choose negative 4, 0, and positive 4. Or I could choose negative 8, 0, and positive 8. Negative 3 fourths, so think about it, negative 3 fourths times negative 4, those would cancel, negative times negative, I'd get positive 3. 0 times negative 3 fourths gives me 0. I get positive 3. Oh, I forgot to add the 3 on the first one. Negative 3 fourths, I, I get positive 3, but I have to still add this plus 3 here. I forgot that. So this should be a 6. That didn't make sense, getting 3 the same time for the y value. Different x values should give me a different y value. So the first point is negative 4, 6. 0, 3, and when I multiply negative 3 fourths times positive 4, I'm going to get negative 3 plus this 3 would give me 0. So there's the three points for example 7. And that's it for today.